Okay, so I'm very uh, excited to introduce Ladrin, who's come to talk to us about um, some of his spiritual path and the spiritual work that he does. And he went to a retreat in Somerset. Could you tell us about that? So yeah, it's great to have a retreat in this area. So I, don't, I think we're the only one, are we, in Somerset? There's quite a few, but um, it's just a bit tucked away. And right, okay. okay. You're probably the nearest to us. Okay. Yeah. To us. <laughs> Alright, with that, we'll hand over to you back then. Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me come down and talk. It's been nice to share with you what my intent and my goals are with the uh, retreat I've got, which I'm um, going to talk about. Uh, I don't know if you can see here, it's on my iPad, but this is the Sentio logo. I've already given you stickers on your table. Um, the path that I've been on is it's about been you know, about ten years doing a number of things such as like uh, mediumship, healing, uh, actual projection, uh, lucid dreaming, and another like uh, healing modalities. Studying um, currently studying like massage and, and getting into like nutrition studying. Um, but I've been on a different array of like spiritual subjects for a number of years, and I've been in different realms and always thinking, okay, if there's something else new to explore and, and find, you know. Tarot and readings, and there's um, alternative medicine and yoga, and all, every different direction. And, and it's like, like every year I find something new to, to research and to find about, and then I find something new again. I'm thinking, okay, where am I going with all this? I don't know. But um, the way my path has been led out, and um, the family built retreat centre in Bridgewater, uh, it's kind of making sense as a facilitator myself of uh, understanding about all these different spiritual avenues and titles, again, we can ship and psychic phenomena, uh, hauntings, and a number of things, like all just under this whole uh, umbrella of like consciousness and spirituality. Um, so at the moment, uh, I'm living in Bridgewater at a tree centre, it's a uh, retreat centre is called Past Inside Retreat, and it's been a family run business for about seven years, people are uh, like Sweat blood and tears in the whole place and build the place up ourselves. And we're trying to push things forward for like a consciousness exploration. And um, so it's been like a seven year journey building up the retreat, and now we're ready to sort of promote some workshops and retreats and do some meetups. And allow people to really explore their true, their true potential they have um, for self development, personal goals, and, and uh, like exploring sort of consciousness, like meditative journeys, and a number of different avenues. The main idea of uh, uh, the retreat I've called um, Sentio, which is this logo here, which is based from the Flower of Life. I don't know if anyone's aware of the Flower of Life. Is anyone not aware of the Flower of Life? I think a lot of people are. But uh, it's, an old, it's a really old man, um, sacred symbol that's been around the whole globe for many thousands of years in many sacred uh, uh, cultures and religions. And it's, it's the, so basically it's like the blueprint of like, um, sacred geometry, and where a lot of like um, things in life can be represented with the flower of life. This isn't the flower of life. This is just the logo I've put together. Um, everyone seen this logo at all? Everyone see this? This is the flower of life. Um, and what it is, in there you can see a number of shapes. There's, there's many, many shapes you've seen there, such as squares, such as triangles, um, more and more circles, and more complex shapes, so different and other sided. But there's much more to it in there too. And I what I wanted to use as a logo to uh, basically describe what I'm trying to achieve at, um, at the retreat is a place where everything comes from uh, the, the first basic forms of life, of, like cell structures, of, of atoms, of molecules, and life, and, and plants, and it, it's, it means so much. So the logo I put together, and we've got, we've got those sticker, stickers on the table, um, so those are like my business cards for the website, as well as having the little logo on there. Um, so we've got the Sentio logo, and there's lots of things you can see in there. You can all put it in front of you, the stickers. You can see like a lotus flower in there, you can see um, from like a microscopic uh, like ice, um, ice uh, you know, when they look in the, so I'm not good at words, <laughs> uh, looking down a microscope on a, a, like a, a bit of ice or water molecule, that's the one, is down in a microscope, you can see that under there, um, represents, represents the sun. Um, there's lots to it, and there's lots of like symmetry and, and everything, and that's why I wanted to use this logo. It's, it's lots of um, lots of sacred geometry in there, 
And it's, it's just, I feel it's very important to me. The word uh, sentio, which is a Latin word, which uh, basically means um, to feel, perceive, um, and experience, and hold an opinion to. And that's the kind of approach I want to um, do at like, passing side retreat in Bridgewater. It's allow people to come into a meditative journey and to experience it for themselves. We're not going to tell you what you are going to experience or, or what you might you know, encounter. It's more about your own personal experience. This might sound a bit cloudy at the moment, but the idea is uh, I'm working alongside of uh, light therapy and it makes you light and sound. Uh, has anyone heard of binaural beats? Okay. Anyone not aware of binaural beats at all? Okay, a couple. Um, binaural beats, um, we, we originally came to Somerset back in uh, 2004 to set up the retreat in side of, um, alongside of the Monroe Institute. I don't know if anyone's heard of the Monroe Institute at all. Um, it's, it's a center in Virginia in, in America. In what picture somewhere? This is the center. Um, it's, it's a consciousness exploration center built with like lots of check units for like exploration journeys. Like basically plugging in headphones on the side of the bed. <clears throat> and it was established by a guy called Ron Monroe back in the 1950s. And he was a sound engineer. And he was listening to certain frequencies on like um, stereo headphones as he was tuning into sort of um, radio shows and like editing material and sipping like um, sort of material together and, and like cutting and pasting. And he started having out of body experiences and uh, lucid dreams, natural projection, and was aware of these subjects. Um, and he didn't know what this was, and he was a, he was a person that turned the out body experience. So he was playing around with different frequencies, and he found in the end the ultimate, um, what the vinyl beats work is by putting different tones in each ear. So we've got, um, say, you put say, a different tone in the right ear, and then a different tone in the left ear, and ultimately what you get is a, a whole brainwave state which is two signals going in left and right ear using stereo headphones. And um, how this works is you put, say, 100 hertz in the left ear and a difference of 110 in the right ear, and your brain recognizes a difference of 10 hertz, which creates a third signal in, within your brain. It's all, all safe. It's been over 50 years of research and development of uh, this technology. And it, what it does is help focus a whole brainwave state. And you can access different states of consciousness, such as like um, you know, deep sleep or deep rest, um, accessing like meditative journeys, uh, the potential of like out-body experiences, um, and also other inner modalities and like um, things to overcome, such as like you know, smoking or weight loss. But the list goes on. Basically, whatever sort of consciousness state you can be in or mindset, you can achieve this by listening to a sort of certain um, uh, album like music which is basically covered up with some frequencies behind, so for like a therapeutic uh, purpose. So if you are aware of binaural beats, you should be listening to this while you're driving or operating machine, as they say on the, on the, on the actual albums. But what it does, if you use it properly, if you, if you use it as a tool, a healing tool, um, you can use it to retrain your mind, have more connections in your mind, have like a whole focused brain mind state. So what this uh, technology we do, what we're working with alongside uh, the Monroe Institute in America is by using some of their materials, some of their albums. And this is peaceful music, you probably won't hear any tones behind it unless you're really sensitive to sounds. But they're almost, you can't hear them at all, you just like listen to music. But after like five minutes, your brain, um, at the moment you're in alpha state, so you're like, you're, you're, you're awake, you're, you're listening, and you're, you're aware. At night you're in like a theta of, of delta sleep or deep uh, state of consciousness. So you listen to certain like albums which have like a theta or deep meditative like uh, track to it, like a frequency, it can help get you deeper in a state of consciousness faster. There were some Shaolin monks that came to the Monroe Institute and um, or people who are trained in temples and they, you know, it's been like 15 years they try and like get this natural state or theta state of consciousness naturally. It takes about 15 years. But um, they came to the Monroe Institute and listened to some of the, the programs, and they found that within five minutes they're actually achieving this much faster. And so this technology has proven to speed up sort of status, states of consciousness. What we'll be doing at the retreat, this is a the retreat there. Um, the space is for 17 people, and I'll put them together some programs. Uh, I've got one in, in January, so the time travel retreat. Always sounds a bit crazy, but um, 
is using certain material which uh, allows you to get in deep states of consciousness, which you can ex um, experiment with, like remote viewing, aware of remote, view remote viewing. Mm -hmm. So you can go like, you can perceive things in the past, or you can be a viewer of the past. So it's not, it is sort of time travel in a way. But I also want to put together like, um, the retreat I want to do is like a timelessness retreat. So you, you arrive on like, Friday, like uh, about, about noon, you just relax. And, there's no sense of time. All clocks are gone. You ask not to look at your phone. So you get more in, in tune with your circadian rhythms of your natural body clock within you. And uh, it's allowing you to not be so stressed out of like, planning things, everything's structured. So you'll, you'll hear, hear like physical big bells outside to you know when to gather up and um, to, to commune. And then there's like 45 minute like sessions basically where you're under sort of like um, you you're, you're in a bed state, like so on, on the bed when you do stay. You listen to sort of frequencies which help you get to deeper states of consciousness. So there's a mixture of like um, having a deep journeying with like lots of good food and lots of free time to reflect. Um, so the idea of a retreat is a is a very much like an educational sort of research facility um, for like extended like expanded states of consciousness. So for deepening your like meditative journeys. Or like just, just getting goal setting or personal development too. Um, that was the main aim for the retreat um, when we moved to Sunset back in 2004 was to do s something very similar to the Monroe Institute. And the Monroe Institute has been going for well over 40 years now and they're still developing new programs, new like uh, albums which help you uh, experience much faster states of consciousness. Um, so there's lots of other things we want to put in place too. There's lots of like um, Maybe some like out body retreats, like a free free day like weekend uh, retreat where you just explore like the out body state, the potential of, like lucid dreaming. So everyone dreams, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if you don't remember dreams at night, you have dreams in your life in which you want to manifest in, in your reality where you want to achieve something. So this is um, what I'm trying to achieve here at the retreat. It's not just having a consciousness exploration weekend where you can potentially go out of body or ex experience different realities as as, as known, but it's more so goal setting, it's personal development. Um, a favourite movie of mine is called The Peaceful Warrior, I don't know if anyone's heard of that, uh, the book called The Peaceful Warrior. Uh, I find it very uh, inspiring, you can look that up, it's a free uh, movie of it on YouTube. And it's basically, uh, the story is of a, a guy, a gymnast called Dan Millman, who, who uh, goes and uh, he f finds like, God at like, this petrol station, a uh, typical uh, grey haired guy, big beard, and he's got a lot of wisdom to him, and he basically retrains Dan Millman, the gymnast, and he's going through some stressful times, and, and he gets him just to go within himself, just to like reflect and to receive guidance. And that, that's sort of what, what inspired me, as well as anything, is to allow people to come together, listen to these frequencies, to get deep states of consciousness, and receive the information that they want to receive themselves. You know, we're all psychic, we're all able to tune into these um, different realities and, and messages coming to us. We all have this ability. The problem is a lot of it's like suppressed and, and uh, not utilized in our everyday life unless we're really um, you know, aware of our ability or, or like being open to awareness. Um, but there's lots of other things in place too. It's a place of the, the retreat, what I'm trying to put together in Sentia is a place of learning, of soul growth, of, of personal development, of overcoming fears, or perhaps just um, being together in like social thing. I mean, that's what we all miss, right? We're all together in the spiritual coffee today because you know, we want to be part of this. But I'm sure a lot of you, when you go home, maybe you might feel you know, um, very alone in yourself, or maybe you don't, maybe have people around you which you can talk to these things. But I've met many people too who have, who I've spoken to and said, well, I can't really say too much to my family because they'll judge me or you know my friends. But you know, you know, this is what I'm trying to do here: some sort of spiritual. Um, like experience, you know, of guides and things. It's more like your own internal understanding of what you can connect with. Um, so the main aim is to provide a retreat space where people can um, get deep in consciousness, um, receive sort of like uh, their own communication with their intuitive side, perhaps if your guides or, or, or God or whatever you want to call it. And there'll be times where there's like um, just free time just to have a notebook and just receive <coughs> guidance and get inspiration. Um, so that's the main um, thing about passing Star Retreat in front of us and programs together. Um, we've got more taking place next year, along with some free meetups too, and some cinema. Um, so that basically, like, what also is 
available at the retreat is not just the consciousness exploration, but also a lot to do with like nutrition and um, like uh, therapies such as massage. Because it's all it's all all together. It's mind, body, and spirit. So we don't just want to just explore the 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 mental and consciousness side. We want to go to a place where we feel relaxed. We can have a treatment, a massage, and feel unwind. We can just leave the world behind us. And my idea and outlook, my goal of, of Sentia at, at Passing Star Retreat is having a place of just uh, tranquility. You can come by and you know, you can go on a course uh, and just receive a lot of like relaxation, uh, good food, uh, good like like-minded people to communicate with, and to really explore like your true potential in yourself, and to perhaps even have some maybe some phenomena that you've never experienced before. Um, that's my personal goal, and you know, I want to share that with people in this area. There's other pictures of the retreat on here too. Um, so we've got big workshop rooms, and um, also com comfortable accommodation. There's, a lot of it's usually shared. There's like there's a few rooms with one single bed in, and there's a few with like two or three beds. But at the end of it, you know, if you do come to one of these retreats, you know, you're at the end, you're always friends with anyone, usually. Um, my main intent with uh, an idea I've got is having a, a place set up for 17 people, but I want to give away a free space to people because I feel like, you know, not everyone can afford things like this, and I want to give the opportunity for people to come by and to experience this, you know, like a, like a competition. I don't know how I want to do this yet, but bear with me. Um, but I'm still like, Putting it together, so it'd be like there's seven spaces for people, and you know one of those people hopefully will get a free space, you know, like a competition or something. Um, at, at the moment, I'm putting together a newsletter, and on there will be a, a number of like helpful links, um, suge suggestions or like quotes, uh, but also some links to some videos, maybe some documentaries, and some information what's going on at the retreat too. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard of Passing Star Retreat, by the way. It's a few. Okay. <laughs> We've been up and down a few years, there's been times where we've been quiet and we've been busy. Uh, I've successfully done about three open weekends there. The first one was very quiet, there wasn't so many people, but after the second and third one we had about you know, a few hundred people turn up on the weekend. And it just came by just to see what the place was like. We had quite a lot of feedback too. Um, the retreat itself is quite unique in, its, in itself, as in when we found it, me and uh, my family, especially my father, he had that body experience himself too, of um, seeing a tree and all the gardens out the back. And um, what I did some research of, of some ley lines. Anyone know what ley lines are? Mm -hmm. Okay, ley line activities around, around the whole globe, a bit like the meridians on our body or energy pathways. And these come from many different sacred sites and also known as the St. Mary Michael ley line that goes around the whole world. Um, it goes through many different sacred sites, especially in England. It goes through like Stonehenge, like Avery, it goes through like St. Um, St. Michael's Mount, um, all the way up to the top um, east part of uh, England, I can't remember where, whereabouts. But, but the, all those energy lines go all the way through, and they say like, it hits like chakra points, just like in our body. Uh, the retreat itself is centered on two ley lines, or a lay center, where two ley lines uh, cross. And we've had sort of, some people who come by and just instantly when they arrive, they just feel really relaxed. And uh, and we feel like this is probably why we've come here to the retreat to set up the retreat in order for people to gain enough sort of rejuvenation of self, relaxation. And some people have, uh, one, one lady who particularly who came up who had mild myofibromyalgia, who had uh, like a serious chronic like uh, fatigue um, in herself, and she arrived and she just felt that go completely. And she, she went away and it slowly came back, but she found that when she was at the retreat, the, the energy of the place, uh, the, the ley line seemed to make her feel better. I don't know if that's just a, just a blue ball coincidence in herself, but it was nice to have that feedback. Um, I traced these laid lines using a, a big survey map and, and um, noting every single like church and sacred site in like the southwest of like Bridgewater. And I just got a massive ruler and just, just did a big line. And what you find if you look at any of these laid lines uh, around the sun, uh, Sunset area, you find like Glassbury Tour is on the main sites and there's loads of like lines that come off it. I found that myself while I was doing these maps. And with that, um, also, I found that two, two ley lines went through the retreat, which we had uh, previously uh, mentioned by uh, several mediums and psychics who came to, to say about the retreat. So there's lots of energy there too. And in itself, it's also it's got a lot of history to it, such as it used to be a wooden farm, used to be a, a milk and dairy place there. That's not there anymore, but they, 
there also was uh, stories of like a, like a monastery there too. So there's quite a lot of like history to it as well, being utilised. Um, so there's other other retreats also that um, we wanted to put together, such as like um, like psychic uh, parties, like weekend parties, when you're like doing sort of like techniques to enhance your psychic like, uh, awareness, um, intu intuit like intuitive like uh, development. And um, the main thing is the main umbrella of the centre at the retreat is like exploring your intuition, your awareness. You know, it's not something I want to. You know, tell you that you are an experience, or it's something that's dogmatic or religious. It's more so like you're going to experience it yourself, and what you will experience, but you know, could be something like a very deep meditative journey. You may experience some sort of, sort of like visionary experience with maybe guides or some connection that could be sort of terms or supernatural. We hope, but um, also to help enhance that personal development, as I said. Um, we're also using something as well called a Lucia Light Machine. I don't know if anyone's heard of a Lucia Light Machine. It's, uh, it was invented by people in, um, in Austria. I don't have a picture on here of it, but um, you have this here. It's, uh, I can't see it in the background, but it's like an LED like, lamp with eight LEDs on it. It shines in, in, on your face with closed eyelids, and you can have Homey Seen playing in headphones if you want. And what it is, it's a strobe-like uh, effect of, um, like, it's just white light shining, like, flashing at your closed eyelids. And what this does, uh, is being, well, some researchers say that it helps stimulate the pineal gland, uh, which helps release certain, like, uh, chemicals in, in the brain, which helps, uh, sort of, experience some sort of, like, um, psychic phenomena or remote viewing. Um, the idea of the, the, the Austrians who developed the um, Lucid Light Machine was just use it as a relaxation device, just to help stimulate sort of different states of consciousness, just to relax. But they found that people were having like out of body experiences with this, remote viewing, and sort of deeper sleep. Um, I've been busy working in the garden all summer, and uh, like building, and just working really hard. And I know for myself this works as a very good rejuvenation tool. And I know that because I was so tired uh, one day, I just I went to the shower and I literally collapsed on the shower floor. I was just so tired. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to try going on the Lucia light machine. So I got on the Lucia light machine, put a cover over me with some, with some heavy sink on as well, and had the lights going for about 45 minutes or so. I must have blacked out, I uh, slept through that session. But well, I woke up feeling much better. And why is this? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure of the science side of it. But I've also had friends who also have the Lucia light machine, and they find that they don't need much sleep when they're in the because it's, uh, it's stimulating some, I think, melatonin sort of levels, which help like, produce sleep, uh, makes you more awake and aware. Um, we're currently doing some workshops around that too. Um, so the idea is doing some sort of like sacred light journey, so having people under the light, several people under the light, going into a hemi-sync uh, like meditation, and then having a bit of silence after, so it's time to reflect. Um, we're still doing lots of research with the Lucia light machine, Sorry, there's not a picture there properly, but um, if you are sensitive to the lights, if you have like, uh, sensitive to like, seizures or, or sensitive to lights, it's probably not as good for you. Like, we can turn the sensitivity down. Um, so we hope to use these, the Lucia light machine and many of the um, other retreats that I'm going to put together. The whole um, journey of the retreat has uh, been an interesting one. Um, that we've had many people come to us and wanting to work with us, um, such as like um, sort of like out and out body explorers, some people who are doing some sort of research into consciousness and who want to work with us too. So it'll be our ongoing sort of like development of like um, some interesting sort of techniques and uh, different like tools in order to help access like consciousness like faster. I say faster, but more just more like uh, more easy to tap into. The nutrition, uh, the, the, sorry, the intuition part, I, sorry. I just want to ask you a question. Yeah. So about the Lucia lamp. Sure. Um, has there been any, any um, sort of spontaneous healing for people that have experienced that? I don't know that as such. Um, but there have been people that have come, used Lucia after a session and woken up or come out of it and they feel much better in themselves, maybe a lot more clearer. A lot of that happens usually people go under the Lucia and after they feel a lot more clearer and a lot more focused. 
I'm not too sure about healing as in like the whole body. But um, if you think about it, if we are like light, light beings or consciousness, then we use using light to help stimulate um, certain parts of the, you know, the body and the, and the mind to help waking it up. Um, so I think you know, if you work with it in that intention to probably uh, heal you, like, like I did when I was just I was in the shower and I was tired, um, maybe there's potential in there if you use it continuously. Um, there have been people who have been working with the light machine and found that after seven sessions people feel a lot more uh, clear in themselves. Um, there is a device which you can um, regulate the, or, or uh, record the like, meridian lines, the energy lines of the body. But I'm not too sure if that's definite like, um, evidence at the moment. But we're still working towards trying to find evidence to you know, support what's, what's taking place. Uh, be nice though to see heal people, that'd be really good. Um, that's what also I do as, my, as myself, as a, as a facilitator for the retreat, is also healer and um, learning massage as well. That's why I want to offer the retreat. It's not just a place to come and experience deep states of consciousness, but also to um, receive like healing and massage and, and to really just rejuvenate. You know, it's like, like a service for your car, right? You may go and have that sort of out, you have it all cleaned out, and you have good food, um, you know, you have good service to, to the body work. And, and um, have everything you know balanced and, and, and like, synchronized. So when you leave to go home, you feel a lot more refreshed and more um, rounded, and probably a lot more focused on where you're going. Um, so the other plans of uh, the retreat is uh, there's many other avenues I want to do, such as like. Um, like retreat stuff with different parts of the world too, like you know, like tropical places, not just at the retreat, but I want to take this to different areas as well. Um, so there's still lots of planning involved. Um, but at the moment, I'm all giving you a, the, the sticker on on the table with like a, the website on the outside. There's a link on the site where you can contact me and just send an email. If you want to keep up to date with some uh, newsletter, just send me an email straight away and uh, I'll put you on the system. Um, so I don't know when I'll be sending these out, it might be one every few weeks or one a month at the moment. Um, but I'm still putting together sort of like uh, programs and making sound technology myself as well as using some of the hemisync. Um, so yeah, the, the retreat itself is situated in, in Bridgewater near uh, Cannington. Um, this is one of the popular workshop rooms. Do you know where Cannington Cummings is? Yeah. So let's run that direction there. Uh, it's about about one and a half miles from the, the coastline, it's not a beach, it's very <laughs> rough flats, but um, there's lots of walks around, which is lucky because it's been doing the nature reserves. And if you heard of the, the nature reserve they've done with lots of like, the flooding, that's pretty much close to there. It's on our doorstep. So the idea I want to do is to wake people up. This is the whole like, day schedule I want to do with people to wake up early, do, do a little bit of exercise just to, you know, um, push all the toxins out of the body and then do a bit like stretching. And then the rest of the day is like uh, some you know breakfast and showers, and then there'd be like either a talk or like a um, sort of uh, like a group session, like sharing. And then there'd be various like um, about four or five different like meditative sort of journeys which you go on throughout the day. We've got some like free time as well just to reflect. Um, so we're using like the Lucia light machine, hopefully for healing, but <laughs> whatever happens. And also using the Hemisync too, which is the biomolecular technology. Um, yeah, so that's the idea. Me myself, I'm still searching and working on, on my like path and, and exploring and finding more what's out there to help people to really rejuvenate themselves, explore their mind and their, their true potential. Um, we all have that within us. We all have that true potential within us to, you know, that ability to seek, to find answers. There, there's always answers there. It's just depending where you look. You know, you're looking in the right direction. But really, the only place you really can find some guidance you can usually live inside. And as a facilitator of retreat, I don't want to be known as a, you know, like a teacher or anything. It's maybe it's me holding the space for people to explore this yourself. You know, the, you do the work yourself almost. You listen to the, the brainwave frequencies, you go into Lucia, and it helps to disturb, so it speeds up your state of consciousness, your, your uh, goal setting, your personal development. And it's kind of like it's your own experiences that you have. And this might sound a bit cloudy, like, well, what am I experience? But um, really, it, there is a you know, different array of things that you could experience in, in yourself. Um, the main goal is, for me, my insight and determination is to help people just to feel more 
uh, welcoming themselves, gone a bit more direction, um, you know, have goal settings, and many other things. So, um, we'll be working with uh, a guy called Graham Nichols, I don't know if you've heard of him at all. Um, he's an out-body uh, researcher, and he's been uh, using many different um, like programs and different like tools in order to help like project out the body, and he's trying to like find evidence too to say like oh I had that body here and this took place and I recorded it. Uh, so he's trying to like really um, sort of like categorize the out of body experience into a place where you know it can be um, there's evidence behind it, you know. But it's also like he's trying to teach people how to do this yourself. Um, so yeah, that's main goal of the retreat. Uh, me and myself, I'm just uh, trying to just you know explore as much as I can. As I said, um, this is a big step for me to, to do this as a, as a job as well. It's, it's an ambition of mine. It's, it's, it's a dream to you know help change the lives of those who, who come to the retreat to experience some state of consciousness or or accessing different uh, parts of their mind and also to do very creative like awareness building games where you, you pair up. And, um, like the out of body explorers uh, retreat intensive, which I want to do is like a, a weekend long retreat, like Friday to Sunday. And we're doing lots of like um, almost like tag team sort of like um, programs where we'd be set into spaces for like uh, doing like meditative journeys and uh, trying to uh, pair up with someone else in the physical retreat. So you'll have the intention to meet together at say a place in the garden or somewhere else or. So you might experience some sort of mutual dreaming or uh, mutual uh, phenomenon. And I've been in many of these retreats myself, um, especially in Ireland. Uh, a friend of mine called Sol Alchemesis, I don't know if it was a And um, he does lots of uh, out-of-body retreats, um, uh, mainly in the UK, but also in like, Ireland, and there's one in France as well. And we have many like um, interesting experiences in Ireland uh, for the last few years. Where people like go into session and then like they'll like come out of body or um, have like a lucid dream and they, they'll meet up with other people too and they'll like share back their, their experiences. We also have this password, um, um, this password idea where you come together like the hall, for example, and if you're out of body, and does anyone know what out of body means by the way? Okay, does anyone know not what I mean? Okay, just a fair one to hear. Okay, so Can you everyone. Explain it, sure. Just explain what you mean by it. Well, there's different people where they explain that body experience, but for me myself, from some experiences that I've had, is nothing really. Um, you don't. It's like coming out of your body almost. Is there any way to describe it? It's like you're having experience beyond your body. Like so, we do this every night when we're dreaming. In a sense, we, we go to sleep. Our physical body is still active, and heart's pumping away, and everything's doing what it should do. But you know, our, our mind doesn't really switch off. We're, we're always conscious, and that's why we have some dreams and some sort of maybe mutual dreams of other people or psychic connections. Um, so the idea is when you come out out of your body, maybe like your spirit leaves your body at night, and you go off these these different places like dreams, dream state, or you might actually have like an OBE. But there's different levels of it. So there's a big spectrum of like waking states of consciousness, such so as like this daydreaming. Okay, this. Um, uh, sorry, the very alert and awake, there's like daydreaming, then there's like dreaming, then there's lucid dreaming, then there's like the out of body state, which again, it's more and more you become more and more conscious, but then the more you go, you, can, you know, there's also the, you know, the coma where people are like completely just, uh, you know, optimizing in a coma basically. But they're still, you know, their body's still functioning, but maybe their spirit is out doing something else. Um, the idea of the out of body state is to really like, um, people get fascinated by it because you can experience. Um, Going to different places on, on this like earth plane, as you call it. Maybe if, like I came out of body now, I was asleep on the stage and then was out just exploring parts of Western Super there and uh, come back and I could probably like go and do that physically again. So it's being a being a viewer, you know, you can open and interact in this physical world unless you know you move things physically almost. Um, so that, that that's what the out body experience is, it's like coming away from your body, your your consciousness is viewing something beyond your body. You, you've got heightened awareness, everything's more clear. Um, but not everyone's always conscious of this. We, we do this every night, thinking, oh, does that happen to me? I don't remember. But some of you may not remember, because uh, we have this uh, almost amnesia when we come back to our, our, our body. We forget where we've been, or we've all done this, right? We've woken up and think, oh, that was an amazing dream, and then 
about the best of days have gone by and we've forgotten it, right? We've all done that, yeah? So, like, it's the same with the obese day, like, uh, we have this amnesia coming back to the body, like, we, we don't forget, I don't know why that is, but it's, it's about working on being more conscious all the time. And the way you do that is it's the same in physical uh, waking life, where you're more conscious all the time. I mean, you're listening to me now, but can you hear the cars outside going by? Can you hear the clock ticking? Can you hear, you know, are you aware of your right foot? You know, it's all these different, like, awareness things that, you know, are we, are we truly aware in this space right now? You know, are we aware of where we are, are our minds um, centered, are we balanced? Um, so yeah, I think that's covered everything. So am I right in thinking that that's, that's a shamanic technique, being able to, so being really conscious of leaving your body and being able to kind of go and work with other people, for example, and then coming back? Yeah, that, that's, that, there's all different, there's many different theories because everyone has a different experience, but it is, it is very shamanic too, there's, you know, shamanic, um, people who follow shamanism, who um, who are very much into the out of body state and lucid dreaming, it's a it's a big spectrum. But everyone has their own unique like experience of that. It's just some people again, some people are more aware of the state of consciousness, and other people aren't. Other people have a bit of a cloudy experience or memory, like a familiarity of being in a dream and being somewhere, but they couldn't quite point it. But they may have had like a mutual dream with somebody, like a friend who in that same dream experience and they could probably explain more bit, you know, vivid like um, what it looks like, etc. But for every, every person I, I speak to um, who've had some sort of experience of OBE, out of body experiences, um, all their experiences are different because it's a, it's a, it's a big multi-dimensional reality of, you know, there's so many different levels of like, let's say, dimensions and, and things that you can explore. And also the phenomena of the typical phenomenon of having an upright experience is being in your bed, you can't move, and you can't hear what's going on, like you hear this crackling noise, which is supposed to be the separation of your body, um, your, your consciousness from your body, and then you suppose there's like a silver cord and, and like getting away from your body and everything. I've never seen a silver cord myself. Have anyone heard of a silver cord? Yeah. Um, I haven't seen one myself, but like, um, I've had many experiences where it's been very short-lived and I've been fully aware and thinking, wow, is this, is this actually happening? I, can't, I built like a little rock cabin in my garden and uh, I was very aware of it, you know, getting, rain, getting rained on or, or, or leaked. And I remember waking up outside my body one day and it was raining. It was like complete, just really heavy rain and, and obviously I was in my, my body in my bed behind me and I wasn't aware of that because I thought, why would you look around and see the body is in, in your bed when you're awake? I thought I was so awake and I could feel the rain coming in. I thought, what is going on here? Um, so I opened the door to explore the gardens and then I, I blacked out, I lost a bit of consciousness. But I never had a, a very long experience. But um, there are experiences I've had which have validated, you know, that I've been somewhere and I've gone to look and it's there, or, or I have like precognitive pre sort of uh, dreams which um, validates, um, so like, I guess, you know. Like psychicness, you know, like you see in, into like the future, you know, like the next day you'll have an experience, you think, oh, I had a dream of that. Um, so I know for myself this is all possible, but it's just like, um, I, you know, it, it's a lot of dedication too. But like, if you're in the right space and you've got a lot of people, and say you've got 20 odd people, like um, experiencing this intent of going out of body when you're all together in this retreat and you're constantly talking about it, you're living it, um, a lot of people are going to have an experience, especially if you're under the Lucia Light Machine, which helps speed these things up on the hemisync and using certain techniques which help you really um, have these experiences faster. When I say faster, it's not like you know much faster than you normally have yourself, but it's just speeding things up a bit more clearer path. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'll ask you a question. Sure. Um, you mentioned you've got a program that you put together for January. Mm -hmm. I know there's actually some of places available. Yes, I do, yeah. Um, can you say how much that material is and how long it is? Yeah, it's £265, and in that you get uh, more food, more accommodation. Um, also, you get like a free CD in there too. Um, and yeah, if you have stickers and stuff. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, what that involves is like a, like a three day uh, long program, which is like Friday is like you arrive at noon, like socially. So it doesn't start at noon time. You're, you're allowed to arrive there and just to relax and you know walk around the gardens or have a kip and listen to some frequencies if you want. And then we start like in the evening about five or six o'clock. We have like uh, dinner together and then 
we have like a talk and to make sure we all connect with each other. And then we do like a, an introduction exercise. Then Saturdays are it's a long day, we wake up early, we do a bit of exercise, and we just do lots of like um, sessions, meditative sessions, lots of free time where you reflect and get a bit of information like inspiration in yourself. Um, and then the Sunday is pretty much the same, but then just in the evening is you know when you can go home. Um, but that's it's called a time travel retreat because I wanted to really you know trap you with that term, which is what I wanted to create, which is a timelessness retreat where you experience no time at all, um, as in like um, there's no clocks, you know you're not unaware of the time, you just detach for a little while. And when I went to the Monroe Institute, um, which I showed you earlier. Place here. Uh, it's something called the Gateway Experience, which you experience um, these different like focus levels. And Robert Monroe, the guy who created uh, HemiSync, who patented it and researched it for well over 40 years, uh, he, he found that there's these different types of frequencies that you can get into, like focus levels. So at the moment we're going to focus one, which is awake and alert and, and you're conscious. Um, and there's focus ten, which is like a mind awake, body asleep, which is Brilliant for like, um, like meditative journeys and like um, the out body state. And there's focus 12, which is like expanded states of consciousness, which we're just expanding a little bit more. And then there's focus 15, which is a sense of no time. This is what inspired me at the Monroe Institute, which is um, Rob Monroe's, uh, he's passed away now. He passed away in like the 90s, I think. And uh, I really wanted to meet him. And so I always wanted to go to the Monroe Institute. And I went there last year. And um, I went in the check unit, they call them check units, which is like a, it's like a bed with like a wall around it, like a privacy curtain, with speakers outside, <coughs> sorry, with speakers outside the head, and a place where you can plug in headphones and you can communicate with basically the, the audio room, which they're pumped in the, the sound frequencies to. So I was laying in there and thinking, I really want to meet Bob Monroe, you know, I've heard a lot about this guy, and, you know, like, I'm at his home, you know, in Virginia, and it's like, just, just want to meet him. So, well, I was in this time, um, focus 15, which is uh, a focused uh, state of consciousness, like frequency you listen to, which is, which is a sense of no time. And um, I was in the check unit, had, had the curtain closed, and had my eyes shut, and I woke up, and I remember seeing this big microphone, like, you know, massive microphone sticking out the wall. And I thought, oh, what's that there? And I opened the curtain, and I saw Monroe and Nancy uh, Monroe there, which is his wife. Just for a short second, then I, I blacked out. And then I, I came back in again, opened up, you know, turned the light on in the check unit when the session had ended. And it felt like I'd been in there for a long while. I mean, the session was only like very, very short, you know, like 20, 30 minutes. But I felt like I was in there for a good few, you know, couple of hours, and about an hour and a half, I'd say. And in that time, I don't know where I was, but it felt, it felt like a very long time. And we did it again, and it felt shorter, which was really strange, because it felt like I'd been there for a uh, very long time, but it was very short, so they played a trick on us. <laughs> but the time when um, I came, I was awake in the check unit, and that microphone, that wasn't there. And so what happened, I must have like gone back in time into that, um, into that time zone when Bob and Moe was alive, and I wanted to meet him, and uh, be an aspect of him, maybe. Um, so I want to say back in time, I'm not saying I want to try and travel or anything, but it's, uh, you know, you can perceive these events, you know, you have, Everyone's got this opportunity, this potential to perceive like past events. Maybe in yourself, in your own waking um, physical life, where you know you wanted to view a place when you were younger, or well, perhaps see the old you, you know, when you were younger, and perhaps you know give a little bit of advice or a bit of helping hand, or you know come into a dream state when you were younger or something. So there's that possibility. Um, so the, the, with the time travel retreat, it's, it is experiencing time. It's, um, you know, you're experiencing like timelessness, and you're also experiencing um, you know, a place where you can potentially go in and perceive the potential like past events or future events. And there's also other programs as well called um, Exploring Your Future and Exploring Your Past Lives. So it's like exploring past lives, just like a big time travel event really. And that's kind of like um, something I've been working on for a while. So yeah, let's face it there if you're interested. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> uh, any other questions?
I just talk a few minutes more, I'll be done. Um, yeah, so that's the idea of Presentio, which is uh, a business I'm putting together for the retreat and working on the side of the retreat again, like to just explore consciousness exploration. Maybe you've had experiences yourself, maybe you have them every night, maybe you have them in your waking uh, life or not. The idea of the Sentio is to hold a space at the retreat, which is only at the road in Bridgewater. So, um, you know, if you are interested, um, I'll, I'll send around the iPad in a minute. You can put, either put your email address and I'll keep you up to date with some newsletters, or you can just email me if, if you want. Um, and if you're on Facebook. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm on Facebook, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's it. I'll, put, I'll pass around um, some headphones, and if you just want to like, have a quick little go to me, let me sing just for a few minutes. Pass that around. Let's make sure the right part's on there. Should be fine. But if anyone wants to go, <laughs> just pass it around if you want to play. So you can get like an idea of it. Um, when you listen to the track, it's not going to put you straight out for you straight away. It's, it, it takes a long while. You've got to be in the right um, frame of mind, the right setting. So don't get too freaked out. Like, oh, I want to listen to this, I'm going to go out and be able to drive home tonight. But, um, You'll, you'll hear, you might hear frequencies on there, or you might not. Um, it, it, it just sounds like it's just nice here. Yeah? <laughs> after a few minutes, your mind you starts to feel really relaxed. Um, but this is the magic bullet. The magic bullet is your intent. And uh, another guy who like following is a guy called Jonathan Goldman. Anyone ever heard of Jonathan Goldman? Uh, he's known as the, the charm uh, master. He's uh, done a lot of like um, sort of research with sound healing. And um, trying to show like uh, how the sound affects our body, just like how a speaker works. You know, the sound doesn't come from the speaker itself; it comes from the room around it, where um, it vibrates the particles and um, the vibrations in the room, which creates the sound in the room. You know, so the sound doesn't actually come from the speaker itself. So if you think about it, it vib vibrates particles and atoms in the room, which helps give you that sound. The same does it in our body. Um, when you have these certain frequencies put through our, our Body, we can go into certain states of consciousness. Um, and even uh, heavy sync works on people who uh, have a tendency not to hear very well, too. Because as long as you have the frequencies going through, um, going through the cranium into the brain, which um, basically helps focus the brainwave levels. Um, so you don't actually need to be fully able to hear them. But it's nice to hear it because you get the music added as well. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm done. But, yeah, so. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Can't, can't remember how to say it. That would work better. Um, can you maybe say how you what started to work on your journey or what experience or inspiration started you for being on this? For um Sentio you mean or well, no, just 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 your your journey with you on that. Okay. Um, well, not just being an ordinary sort of youngster doing sort of computers or something or you were going into a spiritual direction. Sure. Um it's I guess the first time I first meditated experience when I was about 14 and 15 and um, I raided one of my dad's cupboard and found some incense and some candles and, and put them on the floor, I didn't know what I was doing and uh, I, was just in a very, I was in a kneel let down position like this and just, just breathing and breathing is very important because the breath is what um, separates us from both these worlds, you know, if we don't breathe then you know, we die, right? <laughs> but if we breathe enough we can um, get a lot of energy going. Uh, for our bodies. Um, so I was doing that intuitively. I don't know how I was guided, but I sat down and just started just, um, just, just breathing very, very deeply. And then after a while, I couldn't do my body. My body was like frozen with energy, and I was literally like this. And then, so I lay down on the bed thinking I can't move. So when I lay down on my bed, I, um, I put a note on my door before that to my mum when I was, I was a young teenager at the time. I said, please do not disturb. And um, so after a while, I heard, you know, heard this, this knock at the door, like, dinner's ready, and I was like, oh, go away, type of thing, you know, I'm having this good experience, but then um, I think I almost said something like, not too polite. Um, but then I heard this voice down below me saying, please come back later. <laughs> and I was like, that's weird, who's that? <laughs> and I'm up here, who's that down there? And then I started having a lot more experiences um, every night, like um, just being very, very vivid in dreams. Um, and then I started like, meditating every day. I always had the energy going through me, and then doing the deep breathing. So it's the breath that's very, um, very important. Um, but as a family, when we moved to Somerset to set up the retreat, I thought I'd better look into something I can show for myself, like some certificates and things. 
So I started uh, doing some courses on parapsychology, paranormal investigation, um, bio, biopsychology, I think, aware of snakes. And then um, doing like Reiki after that as well, and a massage. So it's been an ongoing development, but I understand the bigger, bigger array that um, what I'm trying to achieve here is to understand all these different avenues of spirituality and consciousness. So when you know people come to the retreat, I understand what's going on. It's not all alien to me. Um, so yeah. Any questions? So do your whole family work in the retreat? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a family run centre. Yeah, so uh, my mum, my dad, my uncle, myself. So, so in a way, you, you're actively brought up in the spiritual tradition? Uh, in a sense. Um, my father was very open-minded to spirituality, but didn't speak much of it when I was younger. It wasn't until I was about I know, my teens I started to listen to what he had to say and was intrigued. So I sort of followed my family to some extent, and I found that I was just very interested in all, all this. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm not so this is the same point to say don't go on YouTube and why not my, my stuff, yeah. but um, what MP3 is, it's a compressed media. So if you're an MP3 player, for example, if you do buy these heavy sync CDs, you want to make sure that you um, copy them to a high bit rate, like a, like a, a CD format, basically. Because when you like copy them to MP3, you're going to have compressed media, which you use some of the frequencies. So again, how final beats work is, you know, how do you hertz in the left ear, difference in the 10 in the right ear? So your brain recognizes the difference of 10 hertz, for example. Um, with some media, which if, if it's copied, you suppress that. So you might get like 100 and, you know, 11 hertz in the left ear, and you might get 110 in the right ear. It you know, it won't be working out very well. So you've got to be very careful what you listen to on the internet, because when you upload like a video, if you make it with the frequencies to, to YouTube, you lose some of the frequencies. So unless it's an isochronic tone, which is like a like a drumming, like a like a shamanic drum, which is a constant like like beat, it's like it's it's entraining your your mind more to, to listen to that. So those, those are okay. But if you listen to binaural beats, you're going to lose some of the frequencies. Um, in answer to your question of like the different frequencies that's out there, uh, there's many different frequencies which have uh, different states of consciousness as well, such as like self uh, self video frequencies like that. Have you heard of those? Um, there's many different ones out there, but you just you've got to be careful about you know what you listen to streaming. That's all. It's best to buy the CD yourself and know that you've got the genuine copy. So yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Lajan, are you um are you creating your own music? Yes, I am. You still do. Yeah. It's so good. Thank you. It's so good. Yeah. And um, just for you know um, coming on the retreat and that. And I'm pretty sure you do this, but on on the dietary thing, mm -hmm. um, is it is it a, a complete spectrum of diet, or is it raw food, or is it vegetarian, or is it, or do you just cater for anybody's? I try to like look at the big spectrum. I, I'm very much into vegan food and raw food, but I know that I can't allow them to come to a retreat and you know be fully on a raw food diet. Um, but, <laughs> but I'm very much into veganism and vegetarian yeah. foods, which is very very important. Um, it helps like it helps nourish the body, helps get the best uh, you know, the vitamins and minerals, and in order for you to think and utilize this uh, material better. I mean, like it's not a main, it's not the major key of of this, but like it's what I want to include as well as healthy eating, you know, and exercise. And, so it's a balanced, you know, everything. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions?